welcome back. I'm so glad that you guys are with us again. So we had some slight technical difficulties the last go round, but I think we fixed it. So thank you guys for joining us again. This is our featured chat with an author. Yay. Hi, Julie. I'm going to try to invite you again. Let's see if it works this time. All right. Bye. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Yay. We did it. <laughs> Hi, I know. So I was oh trying goodness. to use my laptop, and um, but here we are. Now we're on the phone. Yay! And I didn't even think about that. I should have thought to say something about that before, but you know what? We're here now, and it's all good. Okay, great to see you. You too. You too. Thank you so much for joining me. So I told everyone in um, the last little bitty video, but I'm going to restate it here, okay. that Julie Myerson Brown is our featured author for this week in the 2021 Summer Reading Challenge. And she has written a delightful series, the Clearwater series, that she's yeah. going to tell you guys more about. And she will be giving away an autographed copy of Long Road Home. Long which Dance. Is the first. Oh, yeah. Long dance. Oh, oh thank okay. you. That's okay. You got the, that. You just have um, because that's where there's a road as well. There we've it got is. Got a dance. We've got a road. We've got a trail. <laughs> we've got all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. Well, why don't you just go ahead and introduce everybody to yourself and tell us a little bit about your books? Okay. Thank you. And again, thank you for inviting me to be with you on your challenge this summer. Um, I'm the author of the Clearwater series. Uh, the first book in the series is Long Dance Home. I've got two covers. Um, one is what we kind of, I, I, it's an evergreen cover, meaning it doesn't say Christmas. But my marketing uh, team said, Julie, you've got to make it a holiday cover. So I have this lovely new cover. And um, so you might see it in either version. And this is the first book in the series. And the second book is Road to Somewhere. That's and where I got the, Road. <laughs> and, and then the third, which just came out uh, at the end of last year, is The Lonely Sommelier. And what links all these books is The Town of Clearwater. It's kind of, if you've ever watched um, Gilmore Girls, it's sort of like a Star's Hollow, but... Um, but on the West Coast and in California wine country. And the way I have formulated this series is that each book has a single protagonist, a woman's journey. The romantic elements are a subplot. The main plot is the woman's character arc as she starts in one place and has to evolve and change and grow and ends up in another place at the end. Uh, but her story wraps up with each book. And then I pick up a secondary character to write the next book. So if you, by any chance, have read Long Dance Home, um, her funny, fun sidekick is Patty. So I finished up Cece's story. That's Cece there, sort of. And then picked up Patty's story. So still in clear water, still with a lot of the same characters, uh, just the secondary character. And then I pick up Tessa Mariano, who is the sommelier and uh, owner of Mariano's Cheese and Wine. Which and is a place that I would love to hang out a lot. <laughs> I know. I wish I could. I wish I could go there. A lot of people do say, oh, I wish I could live in clear water. I'm like, funny, so do I. Well, I sort of do in my head. So those are, those are the three. And, um, and also, I just released all three in a box set about, my gosh, just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So they're, they're all packaged uh, e-version in a box set. Uh, I might do paperback. I'm not sure. I might, though. Okay. We'll I'm going to pick your brain about that, if okay. you do, because I have questions about that. Okay. <laughs> So don't you have, isn't there a, um, a special that you have going on right now on one of your books? Yes, right now, because it is Christmas in July, and uh, I posted about it on my reader page and in my newsletter, but Christmas in July is a thing, and it start, uh, the history of it is long and actually, I'm not going to say boring, it's actually rather interesting, but the idea of Christmas in July is that 
people who live in the southern hemisphere hemisphere of the earth are in winter right now and so if it's cool and snowy they celebrate christmas in july as sort of a just a series of events um so they can have their white christmas mm -hmm. so now we're boiling here in california um we celebrate yeah. christmas in july with uh sales and specials and and fun things so uh right now for let's see i think it ends what is today the ninth the night. Mm -hmm. I think today, gee, today might be the last day that mm -hmm. Long Dance Home is a 99 cent download. So okay. it's, it's actually, it's on a Kindle countdown for 99 cents. And when the countdown's over, which I, I, it's either midnight tonight or maybe midnight tomorrow night, only 99 cents. So. Awesome. And for anybody who is in Kindle Unlimited and likes that, your books are all in there. All in Kindle Unlimited, which is a subscription service, uh, flat fee, um, and uh, my I, I gain a lot of readers in Kindle Unlimited because it's just so easy. They and they usually plow through the whole series, so and that's um, free with your subscription. Perfect. Well, yay! So perfect timing for this. So I have another question for you. What is the most interesting thing a reader has ever said to you? <laughs> oh, let me think on that. I, I've had a few interesting things said to me. Um, one reader who happened to be a man said something a little suggestive, which like, oh, now I know the kind of guy you like, <laughs> which I thought <laughs> was like, oh, because I don't have too many male readers. Um, but the, uh, so that, that was interesting. And one of the things that I hear somewhat regularly from people who know me and, and, and they know my voice and they know how I speak and how much I speak and they, and uh, several of my friends have said, I can hear you telling me your story. So when they read my books or my essays, they hear me speaking, which I took that as a compliment. I thought it was really lovely and heartwarming uh, that just the way I am kind of resonates in my writing. Yeah, I love that. That's so special. And I do that with, with authors who I do know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I read their books with their voice in my head. So I can totally relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this summer, one of the things that I've really been focusing on with the challenge is to encourage readers to write book reviews, which is huge for authors. Huge. It's such a huge gift for yeah. us, um, especially if you've enjoyed the book. So what do you appreciate most about book reviews? Well, if you're, if it depends if I have on my reader brain or my writer brain as a writer, Book reviews are critical for demonstrating that the relevancy of the book. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at a book and you see that it has a few reviews, you might judge it on that. And I will say that don't judge a book by their reviews completely. You know, we're told don't judge a book by its cover, but we all do. Uh, <laughs> I take reviews when I'm, as a reader, I take reviews with a grain of salt uh, because I've read some phenomenal books that have very few reviews. Either they're just not being marketed uh, or I don't know what it is. They haven't broken out. And um, any book that has, I'm going to say more than... 25 to 30 reviews is starting to gain some traction. Uh, a lot of us have, you know, five or 10, maybe 15 friends, moms, aunts, cousins, <laughs> and they'll just like, oh, sure, sure, I'll write you a review. But you do want those legitimate reviews that come from real readers mm -hmm. whom you don't know. And so I, uh, at the end of every book that you read, now, you'll often see a link, a very easy link, if you're on um, an electronic reader, on a Kindle or some other um, e-reader, that says, review this book. 
And a lot of people just, for whatever reason, they, they don't do it because it does take, it does take time. And sometimes it's tricky. And sometimes you're like, well, I read the paperback. How do I review it on Amazon? Or I received the book as a gift, so I'm not a verified purchase. Doesn't matter. And honestly, it doesn't have to be long. It just, you give your stars, whether it's four or five or three, and say something about what you loved about the stories. Uh, I bonded with this character. I loved the town. Some of my best reviews talk about Clearwater and how my readers love to return to the town. And the, uh, or they talk about the, the character development. You don't really need to stress out over going into big detail because readers are going to just look at the number of stars you gave it and read maybe a line or two of your review. Um, when you write a super long review, which is fabulous, and sometimes it has, you know, you might put spoiler alert or whatever, most readers aren't going to read all those reviews. If you put a long review up for my book, believe me, I will read it <laughs> and I will be so appreciative for it. Appreciate it. Appreciative. Um, <laughs> anyway, I would, if please do write reviews, whether they're on, on uh, Goodreads or Amazon or Barnes and Noble, wherever, wherever you hang out with your bookish friends. And even if a book did not appeal to you, you could probably give it at least three stars and find something you liked. Mm -hmm. If you hated a book, um, you're more than welcome to read it. I, what I found with really negative reviews, um, a few for my books, but a few from other books, is that the reader probably picked up the wrong book for their taste. Right. Maybe they are a, you know, maybe they love historical fiction, but then they picked up mm -hmm. science fiction and gave it a try and it just wasn't for them. Uh, so, so there's that to consider that sometimes mm -hmm. we read out of our genre and I mean, that happens to me. I'll read something mm -hmm. that's not my typical genre and not be that into it but I can always find something, either the writing is good or something, I can always find something good to say about it. Um, along those lines, and then I'll wrap <laughs> this one up, is that for what I love about Amazon is the sneak peek. So you see a cover, ooh, I like that cover. You read the little blurb, ooh, that sounds good. Then they give you three, four, five chapters. If you're not into it or interested after five chapters, then I'd say don't waste your money or your time. Um, that's, that's how I do it. If, if I read a lot of samples and uh, if, if after five chapters I'm not invested enough, I will move on. So that's, that's yeah. my That is super helpful for readers because, you know, even if it is a genre that you enjoy or are familiar with, there's so many different voices and different ways of writing and they may not all resonate with the same readers. So exactly. yeah, that's and a great sometimes, tip. sometimes you will love an author might've written two, three, four books and you love mm -hmm. them all. And you're like, you just jump in. And then I've seen, I mean, I've seen this in reviews numerous times where somebody is like, Oh my gosh, I loved so-and-so's first three books. This one just didn't do it for me. So, mm -hmm. you know, that happens. That happens, but, but the sample will help you weed through uh, the, you know, the, the thousands and thousands of books that are out there for you to choose from. <laughs> Millions, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how many books. It gets a little overwhelming. <laughs> a lot. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> those are all such great tips, and I love that you shared all those with us, because okay. book reviews are super important for authors, really and they're are, also yeah. super helpful for readers, and so mm -hmm. if you are an active reader and you know, if you would just take a little bit of time to, to leave reviews, it'll help other readers as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I say it's like, it's like giving an author a virtual hug. A good review <laughs> is like, oh, you know, and if I, and if I get a new review pop up and it's nice, it, it truly does make my day. Yeah. It, it really is wonderful to get that um, support and gratification. And along with those reviews, your, your word of mouth, um, you know, I say read, review, and recommend. Um, yes. To recommend books to your friends, bring them to your book club. That's a wonderful way to share uh, your joy of reading. 
Yeah. And that's a big part of this summer reading challenge every summer and something that I try to do throughout the year um, on my pages is just encourage readers to recommend books that they really enjoy because that's where I get the majority of my recommendations. You know, if I've got a huge, which of course I do have a huge to be read list yeah. sitting there, I'm going to go down the pile to the one that several of my friends have said, oh yeah, it was great because I know them and I know <laughs> that if they liked it. I'm probably going to like it yeah. more too. Yeah. That's how my book club functions. If somebody in my book club has re mm -hmm. read, you know, we read the book we read once every once a month or every other month, but then also people bring other books that they just recommend. And I pick up, I'd say the majority of my books come from my reading friends, from their mm -hmm. recommendations and from my writing friends whose, whose books I always try to read. Yeah. That's a huge thing too. Yeah. So on that note, what are you currently reading? Oh, I'm currently reading. Well, I'll show you. This is a, I, I got this actually. This is from, um, can you see it? It's sort of reflecting yes. off the, we begin at the end. Wow. I have only just started it. It was recommended by somebody in my book group. I have only read the, um, you know, the, uh, the blurb and the first mm -hmm. few chapters. So I can't yet tell you if I'm into it or not. Uh, <laughs> so that, that remains to be seen. And, um, and I, uh, one thing interesting on, on what books we read, I have let go of the notion that I must finish a book. Uh, mm -hmm. Reading time, I consider my reading time rather, it's, you know, we don't have a lot of time uh, to read and relax. So I generally read at night. And if I'm not into a book, I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> right. uh, and a little a secret between you and me and all of the people listening is I love to read in the bathtub. I love to draw a bath. I have that little, you know, thing that you put and I have my book there. I have fallen asleep in the bathtub <laughs> reading a book. It's happened. It's happened. <laughs> I've, even, I've even dropped a book a time or two. Oh, no. But, um, <laughs> but I think that's also something that it's kind of uh, – liberating when we say to ourselves we don't have to finish a book that we're not enjoying uh so and on occasion that will happen and i will let a book go with zero guilt yeah <laughs> and that's a good mindset shift to have <laughs> that's important yes. Yes. <laughs> yes it's like it's like getting a meal and it's like well, you know it's okay but i don't love it it's like i'm moving on i'm gonna eat something i'm moving on to dessert <laughs> There we go. We should always be able to move on to dessert, especially exactly. for the sticky yeah. buns from your town's bakery. I and I've tried to make them. So if you haven't, if you, if you've yet to read Long Dance Home or the series, there's a bakery uh, called Nutmegs and they, their signature item is a pecan sticky bun. And I actually really do enjoy baking. I'm, I'm a good baker, not a great baker pretty good. <laughs> but I've tried a few sticky bun recipes and they're, they're hard. If you want to make sticky bun dough from scratch, it yeah. don't <laughs> buy the Pepperidge <laughs> farm or whatever. So um, that's my, ne that's the next baking challenge I have is um, to try and create the, the sticky buns from nutmegs. Uh, but I've read a few blog baking blogs mm -hmm. and that refrigerator dough, I think, I think Pepperidge Farm makes it. I'm not sure that that's, it's, it's very good. So I might cheat and do that. That's good to know. So one thing you could do, and this is just a suggestion and it came to mind because I did this with my novel. I, we had a little cook off for um, chicken and dumplings because one of my characters, like she was known for her chicken and dumplings. And so we had this big cook off at my church and you bring your best chicken and dumplings and we're going to award whoever is the one who bakes closest to Mama Mabel's chicken and dumplings. Oh my God. <laughs> and so we had all these different chicken and dumplings, which is great because I got to be one of the judges and taste it. I'm and sure I got to like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so we chose from that and we found the one that was like the best. And so in my book club kit, I have um, recipe cards for some of the things because, you know, Southern lit Southern fiction. There's going to be love food. their recipes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good idea. So you have yeah, to meet the so people in person. The people have to come to my house or something, and or you that would be fun. You, you did it at church. 
We did. We did. But I can see where you could even just make it like a virtual thing. Like you could have people all over the world if they have like a sticky bun recipe that they're super yeah. proud of. I guess we could do it on Zoom, huh? Oh, you could. Yeah. And then everybody could see everybody. That's true. That's yeah. true. Of course, you wouldn't be able to taste them all, which. No, no. I mean, hey, that's what we want to do. But we could see who's <laughs> the prettiest. We could see which ones look. The, look the, mine will be very messy. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Good idea. Good idea. So fun. Okay, so what are you writing next? Are you working on something now? I am. Yes, I am. I'm working on a couple of things. Um, I'm working on next in series. So one of the secondary characters that appears um, in, she appears in Road to Somewhere and in The Lonely Small Yay. She's not in the first book. It is, um, her name is Rebecca. And she is the, the town dog walker. She's sort of all over the place. She's mid-20s. And she just doesn't know where her life is headed. Um, and I'm just starting that now. And I'm formulating the plot for her character arc. There will be a romantic subplot. So I developed that the subplot separately from the main plot because the main plot will be kind of a, a late in life coming of age okay. arc for her because she's, I think she's like 26, 27 and she still lives with her mom and she's kind of clingy and she hasn't found her footing yet, her purpose. So, which is a very common journey for in women's fiction is finding the greater purpose the woman floundering she doesn't know, really know what she wants to do with her life so um, I'm having a lot of fun with Rebecca because when I created her I was like oh my god she is just too cute and too fun <laughs> and I gotta gotta do something with her so I'm creating a pretty dramatic story for her I can't wait to read it yes, and, really it will, and it will be in Clearwater so and that might be that might be the last of the series. I'll okay. have to see because I'm I'm also working in another genre, which is um, more. I guess they call it book club fiction or more mm -hmm. upmarket fiction, where it's uh, the themes are darker, and um, and I'm trying to go off on go off with that too. And I'm not sure what that. I'm not sure where that path will lead. Uh, I am indie published with these books. I just whether you call it independent publishing or self publishing. Um, for the other genre, I'm considering traditional publishing. So I'm investigating mm -hmm. that, those opportunities. That's exciting. It's a lot of juggling. It's a lot yeah. of juggling. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to hear more about as everything unfolds and all of that. I've always loved following your journey and everything that you've been doing. So I'm yeah. excited about all that. Thank you. Well, let's kind of wrap up here with you just let everybody know where they can find you and maybe some of the ways they can connect with you. Great. So my, and I think you linked all of my social media in your, in your page and on your Instagram. Um, but I do have a website, juliemayersonbrown.com. And that in that, there's a link there to subscribe to my newsletter. I send out a newsletter probably two to three times a month. And usually it's very brief. Sometimes I share what I'm reading. Sometimes I tell a little snippet about an experience I've had. I always try to write a little something that um, just about my crazy life, my dogs, whatever I it is I, do, so I am I'm, we're, we just adopted another dog so um and again there's always a dog in in, <laughs> in the Clearwater books lots of dogs and uh so there's my newsletter view the website pull what you want from that and if you subscribe to the newsletter you'll get a link to a free novelette of mine to a novelette is just a long short story uh and so that would be a quick read and that will come into your email somehow and then also i am on instagram julie may writer 
uh, I'm not as active on Instagram as I am on Facebook in my reader group. So Julie, gosh, I don't even know what it is. It's just Julie Mayerson Brown reader group or Julie Brown author. Um, again, it's in the links. It's mm -hmm. in the links. So and between you just the your Facebook, Facebook page, the Facebook, find yeah, that. just search me on mm -hmm. Facebook. And that, that's really the best way. And I'm active. I'm on my reader page every day. So if somebody <laughs> sends me a message, I will see it there. And that's so between, let's see. So that's the newsletter and the reader page and Instagram. Those are the best places. I do have some fun on Pinterest, but that's another place where I'm <laughs> all over the map. Most of it is furnishings, jewelry, <laughs> <laughs> dogs. And um, mm. in our house, we have boxers. We're partial to boxer dogs. So I've got boxer puppies all over my Pinterest because they're, so, they're so cute. <laughs> they are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> thank you. I love animals. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you so much again for joining me. And, guys, just remember that um, she's going to be giving away Long Dance Homes. Yes, yes. I it right this time. <laughs> Long Dance Home right here. Yep. Yeah. So all you have to do is just join in the fun and comment on posts either on Facebook or on Instagram, wherever you prefer, and chat with us. And you're going to tell me you're going to tell me who the winner is, right? Yes. Yes. I will oh, announce it Sunday me. evening. Yes. Okay. And then I'll send you a message with all the details. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks so much for having me. It was great to see you. Oh, thank you. It was so good to actually get to chat with you in person. Well, you we can do this anytime you want. <laughs> okay thanks joy thank you bye everyone